we're moving on to experimental probability, relative frequency. Very simple, um, shouldn't be any issues. Just to be aware that if they ask for relative frequency, they're pretty much asking you to find the probability. So it's just the terminology that might catch some people out. Um, relative frequency is the probability that we get from an experiment. So say for example, if I roll a dice, I know the probability is one out of six to get a three. The probability is there, but if I was to go out on the road and say, what's the probability of the next car being blue? I would need to conduct an experiment in order to come up with the probability, and that would be called a relative frequency because it's not fixed, and um, it's just based on your experiment. Okay, so relative frequency is the number of successful trials over the total number of trials, the same as probability. So if you ever see relative frequency, um, just be aware that it's probability, but from an experiment. So take that down. We're going to take down this example then. I'm going to do this example. Very, very simple. Right, gives us a table with uh, the colours, and again, it's a car, so it's what we just talked about. Uh, Dark flecks, the colours of cars passing the school gate, results are as follows. They're in the table. It says, um, how many cars? Okay, so fairly simply, just add them up. 24, 32, 14, 16, 10, 4, and the total is 100 cars when you add those up. The relative frequency of blue, so it says, the next one says, what is the relative frequency of blue cars? That, that's where that term comes up. And if I hadn't told you, if you hadn't known this, you might say, what's relative frequency? The same as probability. So what's the probability that it's a blue car is 16, or the relative frequency is 16 out of 100. They simplified that down in the book to four out of 25, but always write down exactly what it is. If you want to simplify it, then simplify it. But there can be mistakes made. Uh, the next one, the relative frequency of a red car, so red is 32 out of 100, and that simplifies, well, they put it as a decimal, do they ask for it as a decimal? Yeah, they, they ask this one as a decimal, so then you just put 0 0.32, usually they don't care, that one they specifically asked for it to be a decimal. Uh, the probability that the next car is green, so you're using your data to, to predict the probability the same, okay, the probability of the next car green is equal to 10 out of 100 is 1 tenth or 10 percent or 0 .10, 0 0.1 and then the last question states I haven't done this but it states how when, how can the estimates of the probability of green cars be made more reliable and like the solutions there it just says uh, do a bigger do increase the amount of cars observed okay increase the amount of cars observed So that's for part five. If they ever ask you how are you going to make your uh, your experiment more reliable, you do you, you study more. You wouldn't do a hundred cars; you might do a thousand cars. Okay, and that would that would um, be more reliable. Wouldn't be exact, be more reliable. Okay. After that, that's the first example. Fairly simple. Just really showing you that relative frequency is the same as probability. Expected frequency. So this is when you use your probability and uh, multiply it by the number of trials. So read that. Take down that yellow box and we'll do one that's example two. Again, very simple. I'm sure most of you will be able to do this without my help, but there might be a few that um, get stuck on some of the stuff. So sorry, some of this has got rubbed out, so I'll just uh, fill that in, just bear with me. Okay, they say uh, the spinner is biased, there's one to five on it. The probability the spinner will land on each of the following numbers, one to four is given in the table, so 0 0.35, 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.15, and then K they have for five, they haven't given. Find K, again, that's junior search stuff really, and um, you should know that probabilities add up to one. So you literally add 0 0.35 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.15, and that gives us a total of 0 0.85. So I know k is 1 minus 0 0.85, k is 0 0.15. Next one, again, very easy. Uh, write down the number on which the spinner is most likely to land. It's obviously the number 1, because it has a probability of 0 0.35. Very easy, again, this is a good topic to come back to first day back. Uh, spinner spun 100 times. This is the expected, expected frequency. It's only expected, it's not exact. The spinner spun 100 times. How many, how many threes? 
to find the probability of 3. So expected frequency is the probability of 3s. So the probability of 3 is 0 0.25. Multiplied by the number of trials you're going to carry out, 100. Oh, sorry, the question was 200. I'm just looking at the answer there, the question. It's going to be some 200 times. So it's going to be 200 equals 50. You'd expect the 3 to come up 50 times. Now, it's not going to be exact, but this is what you're, you're guessing. Okay, it's going to be 50. So that's nice and easy now to start off with. Um, so I'll give you questions. Some of the questions will be a bit trickier, so please do ask if you're struggling.